So, Lynn and I are driving back on Sunday afternoon, 5, 12 p.m., back to L.A. from Comic-Con. It was Lynn's first Comic-Con experience, and uh, we're driving on to 5, and the traffic's a little slow. Uh, but most specifically, what are we going to talk about, Lynn? We're going to talk about Riverdale. Yeah. The new uh, Sexy Archie, as they called it, uh, in the in the room. Uh, we're pretty big fans right now, I'd say, of the comics that are out right now, the Archie comics, the Betty and Veronica's, uh, but we were really excited to see the CW's new Archie-themed show, uh, in part because we read the script for yeah, it. I guess since we're huge fans of Archie, new Archie, aka new Riverdale, and all the stuff that they're doing, when Lynn got a hold of the pilot, we went and read it, and we actually really liked it. It was as fresh of a read. We actually really liked yeah. it. I think we, I think our, we were, we were looking forward to liking well, I mean, no, no, it. I was a big I fan was... of Greg Berlanti uh -huh. going way back, so I, I had pretty high hopes that it was going to be really good. But I think there's always a fear that, you know, something that you love gets translated. Well, when, when we read, when New Riverdale came out. I, I was really impressed at how well they were able to refresh that and make Archie feel modern with that. And even that I was, you know, you always have this slight bit of skepticism about. And the Riverdale show, based on how it was described, was an even more drastic modern reimagining of the comic. So part of me feel, felt like, okay, they know how to kind of do this, but is this now going too far? You know, because I felt like they struck a really good balance, at least at the beginning of the new Archie comics. But this, I was here, you know, there's a little bit more sex and all of it that is, stuff. It is, it is very sexy. Uh, but I was just excited that we got to see the show at all. Yeah. We, well, we'd heard, I think, before we went out that they had, they had previewed screened it on, Thursday. it on Thursday. But we didn't get it until Friday night. And, uh... How, how did we get into the panel now? I, we just, I just saw it. I, we were, at the end I, of the day. We were, all I really wanted to do was to get some comics signed at the Archie booth, and I saw on their schedule, I wasn't. we don't really do panels, but I saw on their schedule that at 6.30 p.m. they were going to do another pilot screening, right. and we just, we had already wrapped up our day, and we were probably just going to go home and get ready for the evening, And but then that showed up, and I said, all right, well, then let's just go, and we managed to do it. Yeah. It wasn't like Holly. You, would, you didn't thing, even so. believe that we were going to do it while we were in there. Like, well, I said, I don't think you read the thing right. I, I think this is just a talk back or something with yeah. the cast. I don't think it was... Uh... <laughs> anyway, yeah. so we got to see it. I got to see it. Yay. All right. Well, so for people that don't know, the, the basic gist of the new Riverdale is that it's kind of Archie world, but through a CW lens. So there's more sex and secrets and lies. It's It's... But it also has a Twin Peaksy element. So there's a murder. We see very early on they set up that there is a murder, there is a mystery, and there are a lot of uh, a lot of whodunits and and a lot of uh, you know yeah like secrets that are boiling underneath that have been uh, uh, slowly tearing the town apart, and it's all about to get unraveled right now. Right. And everyone's going to get tangled in it, and nobody, uh, everybody right. has secrets that mm -hmm. are. Uh, complicating their relationship with everybody else. But otherwise, it's almost exactly the same setup as, you know, it's the same characters that you guys know, and most of the character dynamics are the same, the most important being the love triangle between Archie and Betty and Veronica. Um, and then there's some big differences, and obviously. Then, yeah, and then there are some bigger differences. <laughs> Um, but, uh, it, it, again, it's all based on who is relationships with whom, and, uh, and, and again, that's part of the, uh, twist of the show, is, uh, seeing how the Riverdale template would go if you, if you needed to give it the twisted W-E, uh, not W-E-C-W-E. W-E, what the decade is <laughs> the, this? The, the twisted <laughs> U-P-N edge. <laughs> the U-P-N. Uh, so, uh, but this is in CW, CW, so it is it's, it's all teen, teen sex and angst and, uh, and, and. It's not bears. as sexy, though, as I would say. You didn't watch Gossip Girl, and yeah, Gossip no, I, Girl I, I was think... a bit, uh, well, I mean, I remember Gossip Girl when it first uh, went on the air. What was it? It was all, uh, the, they put, like, the parental advisory warnings on the, what was, there was a parent group that was very, very much against it, like, don't let your kids watch right. this, and that was what they made the advertisement for. And I think if you were 
uh, worried about your kids. This was uh, this is tame, I would say, by those standards. But maybe by Archie standards, it's a lot. I, I don't know. Do people have sex in the the, the Archie universe? Maybe in the new no, the I, new I, reboot, I, a little bit. Maybe it's yeah. Too. It's the yeah. the new reboot is is exactly right down the middle from like old super traditional Archie and this new show. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't envision where, how, how the new Riverdale is in the middle, then this is as untraditional as the old Archie is traditional, I would say. But all three still, still feeling really close to the brand. Right. And I think like the, the Archie people are, it's a very small group of creative people in there. Um, and they're not, uh, owned by a, they're not owned by a Disney. They're still a private company, mm -hmm. and it's almost a family business. So, uh, luckily, they they're keeping focus and keeping on point. And I think that's what that's how the, the the new reboots that they've been doing have been kind of staying and revitalizing the brand. All right, so let's let's talk about different parts of the show. Yeah, how much should we give away? I guess by the time that we talk yeah, about this, really I feel like should this know. is you guys, you, Yeah, you guys should have already seen it or have seen trailers. And I you've mean, seen right? Okay, so I'll, well, I'll do a, a quick setup of like what happens in it. Mm -hmm. So the whole thing opens, and it's Jughead is revealed to be narrating that uh, on a July Fourth one summer. Uh, Cheryl Blossom and her, her twin, twin brother, brother Jason. Uh, Jason Blossom, go out on a canoe ride or something like that on the river. Very creepy. Uh, Very kind creepy. Of, uh, kind of uh, Pacific Northwestern, <laughs> twi like the Twilight World. Yeah, they're they're out yeah. in this like music and, uh, video for. <laughs> yeah, and Jason doesn't come back. Uh, they say that uh, he fell overboard and. Uh, right, and she dropped her glove in the river. He falls overboard yeah. and uh, his body is not found. Yeah, never found. Have an empty casket. And, but, uh, but but he's dead. He he's dead. That's, he's dead. He's dead. <laughs> so that creates a pall over the new school year. And just we, as just as uh, Veronica Lodge and her mom, Hermione, Hermione Lodge, uh, move in back into town uh, where Hermione used uh, grew up in, uh, because uh, her husband Hiram. We know in the comics is a much a larger character, but in this one, Hiram has been convicted already. Yeah, or I, you know, she says uh, Veronica's the one that she stands by her father, which to me sounds like there's a court case right. that's coming up. Maybe it's like a Bernie yeah. Madoff yeah, type Yeah, he's, he's at the very least indicted for massive fraud in a Bernie Madoff type case. Right. So, Some uh, sort of Ponzi scheme, something. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, Hermione and uh, Veronica they have They don't have any retreat. money, it seems have like. have no real think. money to themselves, so they are retreating to their smithers. <laughs> so. They have their butler smithers. <laughs> so they got that. That's a, They got that up. <laughs> yeah, so so Veronica is kind of starting at a disadvantage here, but she is definitely still a rich girl who has entitlements. It's sort of like if Blair from, again, I'm sorry to keep bringing up Gossip Girl, if Blair had uh, been uh, taken down many, many pigs, and but she's not really like Blair at all, but, you know, she was a queen bee type girl, it seems like, in a very, she makes references to the Met Ball. They were living the high life in New York City, and now... They moved to small town. Sure, right yeah, now. she was a socialite, mm -hmm. and now uh, and she had a mean thing. girl. She sort of implies mm -hmm. as much. And, uh, and then finally, we get to uh, Archie um, and, and uh, Betty. Whom, Who's my favorite? Whom, <laughs> uh, who we haven't seen, who, who have not seen each other all summer, mm -hmm. um, and uh, Betty. Uh, Keeps wanting to finally tell Archie how uh, she feels about him, or to but, have the you know the talk. It yeah. feels like they're best friends. Yeah, to, they to finally, sure. yeah, to finally put up and sh or shut up about this right. whole thing. Right. Uh huh. Um, but uh, he comes back and he's and they're both insanely good looking. Everyone's insane. super good looking yeah. on this show. <laughs> yeah. CW, but, I mean, the comics imply that they are good looking people. Right. You know? This is this is a world where everybody is super super attractive. Yeah. But even characters that in the comic were uh, I'm not not gonna get too much away yet. Maybe we'll we'll talk about it. But people that were older characters are now young sexy characters. So uh, so Archie is. I think we're gonna have to talk about it. Maybe. Yeah, that's so, important. Uh, yeah. Uh, so Archie comes back and he's clearly haunted and or uh, his mind is uh, not exactly in the present when right. he goes and meets Betty who really just wants to have that talk but his mind is elsewhere. Right, and it's implied that perhaps his mind is elsewhere because he's really into the idea of pursuing a career as a musician, and yeah. he doesn't know how to tell his dad that. His dad wants him to work for him. He 
also is trying to play football, but now he wants to be a musician. So you think you are led to believe that that is sort of he, what he is distracted with. He's clear, he, it, it is implied that he had some sort of awakening during the last summer. Right. And they, on this there, uh, you know, and on this new school year, he is a different person than they were before. Mm -hmm. um, so the new school year starts and everybody meets each other and Betty and Veronica, um, you know, have... And Kevin is and there. And Kevin, who is uh, clearly a large character at this point, an important character at this point. And this is where we meet uh, Reggie and Moose. Uh, uh, Dilton we got to Dilton, meet in the opening, Dilton we meet actually. very quickly in the beginning because he is the one who discovers uh, Cheryl Blossom uh, at the edge of the water. Um, but, uh, yes, yeah, so then the really big reveal, the big saucy reveal of the whole thing right. is that over the summer, <laughs> Archie had carried a, a torrid and illicit affair with a suddenly very young and very hot Miss Grundy. <laughs> Miss Grundy, man! They, this is uh, probably the biggest change from uh, who that character is in the comics, yeah. I would say. I mean, there are definitely big changes. Uh, we see, you know, Hiram isn't in the first right. episode. That's a big character. Uh, Archie's mom and dad are not together either. Oh, yeah. That's another. And which leads me to the other thing that I was excited about, which is uh, Dylan McKay, yeah. a.k.a. Luke Perry. Yeah. Another, I, Archie's dad. Uh, again, people have never looked so hot. But, uh, yes, Archie's I mean, he dad. Is the, he is played. the stunt casting of the entire show. He is the only real name in the show. Stunt casting. No, and it's, 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 all, it's been really like, yeah, I, I, I loved when they announced that. I was super excited. I think it's that. great. I mean, it was really funny. One of the funniest things about the panel, well, I don't know. I think you're, um, oh man, I'm going to kill myself. Is it Cole or is it Dylan Sprouse? Cole who is Sprouse. Cole Sprouse. See, now, he has a name for people who are 10 yeah, years yeah, younger yeah. than us, obviously, but, uh, it was very funny at the panel to see there were younger girls there in tears, I would say, to see him, to see Cole, uh, who's playing Jughead on the show. Who was the other person, I would say, who was a name right. in this? Uh, and then there were all the people my age, all the women my age, who were like, oh my god, it's Luke Perry! Right. And I think there was a surprise, too, because his name, he actually didn't have a name tag out yeah. on the table. So he, that was, they, they almost didn't have enough. The, you know, spaces for everyone to sit. I think he had to go sit on Archie's lap or something yeah. like that. So, uh, yes, these were the uh, sort of the uh, the big surprises yeah. that they've set up, which is that, uh, yes, Archie's parents have split up, Veronica's parents have split up, uh, Archie's uh, father and mother uh, clearly have a past with each other in high school. And yes, Archie's father and, and Veronica's mother. And Veronica's clearly mother, Clearly have yes. a past with each other, so that's that's going to come back. And, and gonna, uh, something's yeah. going to get rekindled uh, there. Miss Grundy is uh, the hot uh, yeah, teacher. And, and had, uh, Which, again, this reminds me of Gossip Girl, because there was a plot with Dan and his team. Anyway, and obviously, like, yeah. that, was, that was part of the plan. <laughs> right, the right. The of the show. But, yeah, so that's the really big one. They're carrying a very, very heavy secret, and that's clearly... Uh, enough to keep these characters off kilter but uh at the very end it is also then revealed that they that archie and miss grundy might there's a 27 minute slowdown in oh, five miles you are still on the fastest yes, we're, on, we're on the road and we really are driving Google Maps is, uh, <laughs> here wait i gotta check it and make sure we're still uh, recording okay we're still recording well you never know google maps uh, breaks your phone or something so uh but uh on that morning of July 4th, Archie and Ms. Grundy were also by the river, and they may have heard or what might have known a little bit like more. like a gunshot or a yeah. firework, as they like to tell yeah. themselves. So. Basically, they, there's something that they may have uh, known or witnessed that would contribute to the case of uh, the Who death of Jason, yeah. uh, Jason Blossom. But because of the circumstances in which they witnessed whatever they witnessed, they, they are felt not, like they could not go to the authorities and explain why they were by the river at right. six in the morning together alone. So that's all the heavy stuff. But then everything else is, you know, Betty and Veronica are pining for Archie. Uh, Veronica, not as much. I mean, they've yeah, stuck they, her. Yeah, like it's, yes, they, yes. They, if, if there's any, any if there's any other people, Archie played by a very, very attractive actor who's from New Zealand, who I never heard of before. What right. is AJ? I don't remember. He's right. insanely good looking, so I'm sure by the time this comes out, everyone will know who he is. And he's a very good actor uh, who they had to 
dye his hair red, and I think they did a, a really good job with that because that's hard to do uh, <laughs> to make that look good. Uh, but uh, yeah, they uh, Veronica's helping out Betty a lot, which which I like in the comics right now. Veronica is a pretty despicable character, at least in my opinion. Yeah, I think I think that is to me the best thing about the pilot, or the most refreshing thing about the pilot, is that in uh, in the new Riverdale Archie series, Veronica has yet to really redeem herself. You mean as... in the, uh, the Archie comics? Yeah, I'm the sorry. Comic. Yeah, sorry. The new you, Archie comic. Yeah. They call it the new Riverdale universe, like mm -hmm. the new, the, men, the you know, the timeline. But in the, the in the Riverdale. current, the new new Archie comics, yeah. Veronica's shown up, and she it's, it's similar. She's come to town. Her father is he's still rich. He's still he's rich, and it's obviously this is these are very divergent universes. Yeah. These are not the exact same. Right people, stories, but... She, but, but it, yeah, she, she has yet to grow out of the stereotype of her being a spoiled rich I, I feel like she has almost zero redeeming qualities except for the fact that she likes Archie, which is so hard because in the comics, I mean, yes, I'm Team Betty, I guess you could say, all the way, and I'm sure, as you said before, Lynn, wait, they're just setting it up for a turnaround. Maybe they are, maybe not. Maybe that's the, the tension, yeah, they, is that, that maybe she doesn't have a lot of redeeming qualities yeah, except basically, that she we're, likes we're nine, Archie. Basically, we're nine issues into... I feel bad. There are moments that she's not terrible in the book. I think they just get overshadowed by her just being so over the top rich delusional it's just crazy and in the on the cw show she comes across she's been brought low a yeah. little bit I by mean, the she circumstances is, she, she is much she's more in. sympathetic she is much nicer and and the chemistry between her and betty are is is much more important and much better handled right they're they're setting up a love triangle where it's they're almost i think going to feel bad it, it, it's they're they're both going to end up liking him and they're both going to almost feel right. bad if either of them ended up with him yeah, which, and I mean, that's which maybe works well because you know does that's does archie you, ever get to i yeah. guess archie and veronica got married right you know more about the history I, again of those that. are all alternate timelines anyway, right so right but i what it doesn't it always seem like betty's the one well you told me what was it there was an article that you'd read once about the archie yeah and, i think the thing that you're that the, the a comments. lot of kids don't realize right. with this idea that it's a love triangle is that if you really read the comics, Archie is not interested in Betty. At all. Ever. <laughs> and she is, and Betty is just uh, desperately, desperately clingy <laughs> and dependent on, on Archie's approval, which mm -hmm. he he will never give as long as Veronica is there. He will go on dates with Betty if Veronica is not there, but always given the choice, he will always spurn Betty. He will always pick Veronica. And Betty, in the comics, she's just so cool. She's just the ultimate. I mean, she's already a pretty cool character right. already. Uh, although, what, what was that other article you read that was so funny? Obviously, this isn't true in the new comic series, but in the traditional, in the traditional ones, what is it? Betty and Veronica actually look exactly the same. If you remove your the hair, you can't yeah. tell. Design-wise, the, the, the traditional Archie <laughs> comic design for Betty and Veronica are exactly the same heads, and the only thing, <laughs> literally the only thing that is differentiating them is their hair, and if they put enough thought... And their personalities, their Yeah, 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 but I mean, like, the look. Up, but, yeah, if you were just looking at the look, if they put enough thought into it, then you'd be able to tell that, you know, one person's clothes are rich girl clothes, and the other one is, you know. But if they're wearing they're bikinis, they were literally looking exactly the same, except for their hairs. That's funny. Um... So, yeah, I, I think that is the biggest thing that I really like. I really like Veronica's character in... I know, pilot. but I wonder frankly, if it's just... I think she's my favorite character in the pilot because she's the one that, like, she's the most she, active. She's the most active, right? Well, I think Betty's trying. Betty is, uh, again, all these actors are, I, I wish I knew their names because a lot of these, I'm sure these actors have been around and they've done a lot of work before and I just probably work that I haven't seen because I'm not the key demographic that they're geared to. But, uh, no, the, the new actors are, uh, they're all extremely good looking. I thought the, the girl who plays Betty... I, I, what did I say? I thought she was like Piper Parabo's little sister. She looks exactly like Piper Parabo to me. And uh, no, uh, she's great. Uh, Veronica is Latina, I would say. That's a little bit of a, a change. The, the actress, I'm not sure if she is uh, Cuban, Brazilian. I'm going to get into trouble by speculating. I'm not sure. Uh, 
uh, what her exact ethnicity is, but that's a that's a little bit of a change they've done. They swapped some of the ethnicities. Uh, or yeah, swapped, among, among the bigger bit, among the yeah, bigger creative choices they made was good, make it make the cast uh, quite a bit more diversified. Um, because the traditional Archie cast is all white. Uh, obviously, the newer comics are yeah, pretty much all white, and then there are what are basically token minority characters and what they did this time around is yeah take kind of characters that are are racially neutral and uh, i mean all the characters all, all, all are, racially them are racially neutral. you could have done you know with, with any of the characters i guess they're uh they're you know an argument to be made that betty and veronica and archie have to have a certain look archie's a white guy with red hair betty's a white girl right. with blonde hair yeah. but other than that you can yeah that's, so that's why that's why veronica that's why works as a raven haired girl and then now yeah. she works as a latina yeah um but uh, uh yeah the uh, the other ones that they did were reggie mansell and dalton doily are both asian american that's a, that's a cool change for me. What is it that Aziz Ansari makes the joke about? Like there there could be like one Asian character on a show. That was the so that's that's kind of uh, cool that you can see a show that said okay we can have two Asian characters. Yeah. It's okay and they can be different characters. Yeah. It's it's um, all right. Dilton, we 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 don't really get anything out of Dilton just yet. Reggie is uh, he's I'm not crazy about the way that he's written. Um, because he's just kind of obnoxious, and he, I, we don't get any of the scheming. I think you might. I mean, it's a pilot, and you've gotta kind of give it. I like that he's not. A, I like that he's not just straight up a jerk. <laughs> and I'm not. I'm, I was never. I think that's hard in a TV show. I mean, maybe in a comic you can get away with something more one-dimensional than that. But on a show, I think you need. You for know, the actors to always, believe that they're the, not terrible in the comic, people. In the comics, Reggie's always shown as both entitled and very jealous of Archie because he's always the one who gets the girls. And in this one, none of neither of those qualities exist. And I, I would let. I would. I hope that they are able to develop that in such a way to give that actor a little bit more to chew on for that character, mm -hmm. um, because. Reggie is an important counterpoint to Archie's character. He is a person that is uh, hyper self-aware and hyper sensitive of who he is, and in a, in a bad way compared to Archie, who is just so hapless and you know, kind of uh, stumbling along. So I hope that I hope that they develop that more, and that would be good for that Asian American actor. Um, and then the other, the the last big. Um, well, Josie. You're yeah, so, Josie. Yeah, so the last, the last big. There, there's a couple more was, ones we we should talk about Lewis also, but. Uh, yeah, um, but yeah, so Josie. Um, and the Pussycats. Josie and the Pussycats them. appear, um, and they are all. African American. Uh, all three of them are African American, <laughs> um, and uh, and it works. It's fine. Um, it creates a, an interesting. It, it, the way that it is, the way that they are introduced, creates a weird racial tension almost. <laughs> How that that, uh, that Archie's almost trying to appropriate or trying yeah, to take over. Our, their... Yeah, Ar Archie comes to them <laughs> hoping that maybe they'll help him with his music career, and they take it as though he was kind of trying to butt in or or ride on their coattails, and uh, it's not. <laughs> it's, it's, it's completely subtextual and it, it, it's I think sure. it, I think it was played in the scene it was totally unintentional yeah. it was neutral maybe people thought about that maybe the actors played it that way I don't know they might have said hey yeah you know what does this like this white guy who's starting no, to decide whole, he wants to be a musician something we've been working seeing, for seeing Josie in that scene is you know just is a surprise to begin with because you, you're not necessarily expecting to see that part of the Archie universe be such an important part of you know like maybe they'll show up a little bit later or something like that but they they kind of are front and center they're you know they're the musical montage but at the, the end uh, of the episode you know the, yeah the the characters uh if i remember correctly from the script the, the characters were written to be black yeah so that yeah. was a change that was something that they'd obviously uh the writers the creators but, uh, of the new show this is a this was a decision uh, that they made towards the, and the changes. Of all Stilton, of the, I, or Reggie, I don't remember. Maybe no, that, no, I think worked. those came out in, uh, in yeah, casting. Yeah, that was just in casting. Okay. And then that's the thing, like, the, 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 review, the, the introduction of Josie is, of all of the things that happen on the show, the most self-aware or self-conscious one. They're the, 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 their reveal and the, how they're kind of different um, and how they're kind of important in this uh, new saga the show writes it as, you know, like, this is who we are now, we've got attitude, you know, don't try to mess with us, kind of. Um, and the, the 
the show puts it into focus, and it's fine on a purely story level, mm -hmm. but it it makes the the novelty of it even more jarring. So you're just kind of sensitive during that scene. It's like, for example, as soon as you see them, they all have their cat ears already. Um, it's an Ariana Grande look. They're doing an Ariana right. Grande. Exactly, and it's just like. <laughs> Everything, everything else so far had been very straight and non-silly, and then you see that, and you remember that this is an Archie comic, and frankly to me, like, as soon as I saw that, I was like, oh man, like, there's gonna be a Sabrina the Teenage Witch coming. Like, they're, I think they're, like, you're, they're setting it up, like, there's gotta be... Do you think be it'll a... be, like, a Wiccan character? Yeah, like, what exactly. do you, you know, what do you think that'll be, or is that a... <laughs> seeing Josie with the Pussycat ears shows that there is still room for whatever silly parts of the Archie universe might, you know, they might want to bring up. Again, it's fine. It all it all worked out fine. It was just a slightly bit distracting to me. Oh. Um, but uh, yeah, um, I thought as far as uh, as somebody who really really loved the script, I thought that the direction and the final execution of the pilot was just a little bit under what I saw in my head. The main thing is that it moved really fast. Well, and I mean, the there were things that had been cut from the script and there yeah. were a few changes. There were, uh, and I, I assume this is going to set up for storylines later on, but Betty's sister, who we find out has, uh, does Betty have a sister, by the way, in no, the comics? No, I don't think so. So this is a new character. If she it's is, going she to... is a character, like, um, I, I think it might be one of those, like, it's not consistent whether or not uh -huh. she has a... Well, this is important to the TV show in that uh, Cheryl's brother Jason and Betty's sister, uh, I think in the script she was named Polly, I don't know if they even say her name in the TV show now because she actually doesn't appear in it, but, uh, she had, um, uh, Betty's sister had a relationship with Jason that had not ended well to the point that uh, Polly is now in, uh, described as a halfway house, essentially. And in the script, I want to say, she was living at home still, and yeah. she was just... Just like a shut-in. Right, she was kind of troubled by whatever had happened yeah. with that creepy, It was a traumatic experience. It was, it was a traumatic experience. Um, and uh, I think Betty's father was a character before, too, and I feel like he's... He is there. They are talking with each other. He's there, there were scenes that were cut out a little bit more, and Betty's mom, uh, her edges are sharpened maybe a little bit more than we read it that way in uh, the script, although I think it was all there. But that's a change. I think that's obviously going to be important because the, uh, the reveal at the end of the show, because we've all seen it now, is that uh, Jason's body Somebody killed Jason. Discovered. He was shot in yeah, the head. Yeah, he shot in the head. So the gunshot that Archie and Miss Grundy heard, yeah, that was really a gunshot. He was shot in the head. So it's going to be who shot Jason. Right. And I'm sure Betty's sister is probably going to be a suspect, as are all the Coopers. Mm -hmm. I'm sure people, well, I they, mean, who, who wanted to do it, right. who who done it. It's, Again, everybody yeah. has secrets and everybody has grudges that you never, that have been running deep, apparently. And, mm -hmm. you know, who, who knows? what other secrets have yet to be revealed and what other relationships have yet to be revealed. Um, so yeah, I, it just felt really quickly paced to me that the show is so um, evocative, like the, the visuals are so evocative, everybody's so pretty, everybody gives really good goo-goo eyes at each other. Um, but... Uh, They're covering a lot of ground. I know, There's and, a lot of characters, I'd say, in a, a, most pilots right, don't, and that's, unless it's, you know, I, I lost didn't introduce that many characters in the pilot it, as in depth as this show has to do and a part of that I mean on the one hand you get the advantage that you know who Betty and Veronica are so you don't you you can skip a lot of the exposition that you might have to have you know who Kevin is you know who Dilton is that's all fan service to kind of just drop in a little right. bit of that so you but get the advantage of not having to you have to give as much in-depth depth, depth uh, they, exposition I, they, but you also want I think to give everyone a taste of all these characters. It, it just feels like they were smart enough to know that there were some things that they needed to cut because the, the pilot was just way too dense. And you want to leave, you know, maybe some mystery right. or you want to Yeah, because, to it, I mean, just frankly, it wasn't necessary. Like, right, you can, you can sure. wait to, to show it. And I feel like it could have just gone, it, it they, they could have just trimmed a little bit more from something, maybe even waited until oh, revealing something. Oh, and I'm not even sure. Else. I'd have to look up what version of the script that we right. even read. That could have been a very early draft. Um, but uh, just before. to let other moments breathe. You know, again, this is, this is uh, a lot of uh, teenage angst 
you know, a lot of emo moments, and I feel like it, 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 we could have gone for more more emo moments of people just kind of sighing off into the distance. You're just kind of like, because again, this is a very brand new, this is a world that we are supposed to be familiar with, but it's all very brand new, and I think we could have, we could have stood to uh, have a second to kind of take in how this new, this new world differs from the old one. Um, it, it's just a very, very, very slightly, uh, you know, a tiny thing there. Um, Plot-wise, they didn't really change much from the script, which again, I really liked, so almost everything is there that I needed, and the stuff that they cut out of it are things that I didn't feel like was missing from the pilot. Again, I feel like they had too much. There, there are things in there that, you know, there are tiny moments in there. Um, the other thing that this is more, this is a thing from the script also, but I was more okay with it in the script, is that um, I don't... Jughead is such a barely character... Jughead does not interact with anybody in the pilot with the exception of Archie only at the very end. And I mean, part of that is I think they're setting up a... I mean... There is a Obviously, mystery. There is something between Archie and Jughead. Something that had happened in the and past. Maybe it ha and maybe it is a related to the Miss Grundy thing. I'm sure, not sure. I mean, maybe, I mean, yeah. maybe it is that he knew or something. Yeah. But it, it could just be. I, I think we're gonna we're gonna learn a little bit more later. But the two of them apparently had a falling out, uh, and Jughead is very much. Uh, you know, he's he's Gossip Girl at the start of the episode. Right. He's writing the uh, sort of story. Or a blog, I, I don't know, it's like a Microsoft Word file of yeah. what happened. And he knows what's going to happen ahead of time, too. Um, <laughs> but, you know, that, the, the Jughead and Archie relationship being the second most important relationship in the Archie universe, mm -hmm. the first being the Betty Archie Veronica love triangle, um, I think the, the show could have done a better job of reminding us of the weight. I'm saying, like, the, you know, the heaviness of how important it is that in this version, Archie and Jughead are not as close as they were in, in you know, as, as we expect them to be. So there is something, it's supposed to be that something really big is happening here. Even, even on just, like, there's something weird when you're watching a pilot for an Archie show and Jughead is barely in it. So to me, if you haven't seen the second episode yet, to me, the second episode has got to be like a primarily Jughead episode. It has to, it has to explore Archie and Jughead immediately. He has to be a really, really big part of the second episode. Like that has to be the the theme of the second episode is. And if it's not. <laughs> and if it's not, I think like where is Jughead? Like it's, it's he's so important. And again, like uh, Cole Sprouse is like he's he's a set, you know the other important cast there, mm -hmm. and he has. Yeah, he has such an iconic look, and he is clearly it's the narrator. It's a odd that he, I guess, wasn't interacting with anybody else. Yeah. I think that that was more of a decision. Uh, in the script, I think there was a reveal. Maybe I misunderstood this from the reading, that I think the character was supposed to be deaf or maybe hard of hearing. Yeah. That was a change that they'd made, which I thought was a positive change when they cast Sprouse, because he is not, and I, you know, I think a deaf character should probably actually be played by deaf people. So I think that that was a, a positive change that they made not to try to, to force that in uh, with the casting, but it made a little more sense, uh, maybe, that he, I don't know that he was more isolated. Yeah, or he yeah, wasn't yeah. Talking it, it was, yeah he's just a little much. bit more aloof. Right. You know, but I mean, he's always a little aloof. I, I do think it's weird. I feel like Jughead doesn't only just talk to Archie. He does have relationships yeah, exactly. with Kevin and it, Moose and, and, and Jughead, Betty also. Yeah, no, the, the thing that makes friendly. Jughead so... Uh, you're right. When I say the relationship between Jughead and Archie, that's... I, I'm actually saying the relationship with everybody to Jughead. Because he is the... And Pop, I mean... I mean, he is in Pops the whole time. Yeah, I mean, but, it, yeah. It, he is the... He is... Yeah, there is a certain... Um, neutralness to his character. He, you know, he's just the sarcastic one. He's the one that couldn't care less about all the silly drama. Mm -hmm. And it is important for him to actually be in the thick of that drama mm -hmm. so that he can comment on it. In this one, he's commenting on it, but he's not ever really in it. Mm -hmm. And it's, that's a, it, it's fine if you're not expecting Jughead, but this is Jughead. And, uh, and we need, you know, and, and, uh, and then we need him talking with these other characters. We need him to uh, to see Archie, you know, 
uh, getting whiplash between Betty and Veronica and rolling his eyes and eating a and eating a burger, you know? I think you're going to get a lot of that. I don't think I, 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 again, I, I hope so, and I think that's that. what needs one, to happen. One thing that might be hard, though, I mean, yeah, you know, it's the CW. It's all about, uh, you know, love triangles and all these kind of relationships up and down. And one thing about Jughead is he's, he's never been interested in girls, right. guys, anybody. He's a pretty much asexual character, which is... You know, that, that can be hard to have your sort of second male lead, uh, especially, you know, somebody that attractive. I feel like fans might be clamoring, oh, let him get with Betty, well, let him get with Veronica to stay really true to the character. I think part, it's part of the be, Part of the problem that they that they have in front of themselves is that the character, that the, the role in the dynamic that Jughead is supposed to be playing is clearly being taken up by Kevin. Which is the, the gay character, basically. The, the character that will not get with any of the other straight leads, you know? The, and, and the one who gets to make the snappy retorts, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so Kevin occupies a bunch of the space that Jughead's archetype would normally fill, which is part of what, uh, uh, you know, they're kind of doubling down. The again. sarcastic best friend. Yeah, exactly. So they're kind or of the joke, doubling The gay down. best friend is the show. The, the, the yeah. show tries to kind of make fun of you know, stereotypes that, that it has to walk through right. a little bit. Um, it, it's funny because I think Jughead in the reboot series is really good. I think they handled him really well he's in that. He's great, and I love his backstory in the comics, yeah, and too. Been, That's fantastic. It's, I, I miss it it's a little bit a, here. It would be cool. Yeah, I mean, they, they live in different worlds. And it's, it's almost not. a reverse with, with how they treated Veronica, because in the, uh, the Archie reboot, Veronica is not in the opening, in, in not in the first issue, and Jughead is the one that, got, had, that catalyzes everything. Mm -hmm. um, and in this one, Veronica is the one that catalyzes everything, and Jughead is a non-character. Um, so, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go so far as to call him a non-character, but I'd say, you know, he's in a, a narrator. world I mean, where he's, yeah, he's, he, a, he's an omniscient narrator in it, mm -hmm. you know. And as a, he's above it all. Yeah, he's, exactly. Yes. Um, so, again, that's fine for now. I think it could have been executed a little bit better, but what I really need to see is that he needs to be in the school interacting with everybody. Um, or Jughead. A, yeah, and, and I mean, frankly, it, they really just need to go ahead and start saying what happened between Archie and Jughead. That well, you know, they'll get to it. I mean, I mean, it wasn't all going to happen in yeah. the pilot, but... Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I look forward to seeing the rest. I do not get excited for TV shows at all. This is probably the most I've ever <laughs> been excited for a new TV show, and the first ever that I've been excited for a CW TV show. You are just... You... It's Archie. Watch the like, Flash. No, you need to watch it's not. some. I, it's Archie. I'm only doing it because if it's Archie. Like, if, if this was literally the same exact thing, but it wasn't Archie, I wouldn't be interested in it. Oh. Which is fine. I don't care. Like, I, I get to don't get Archie. Don't hate on man. the CW. No, I don't hate on the CW. I can't. I, I, it is. It would be stupid of me to say that I'm hating on the CWB, but. I, I, I guess you're not. You're not necessarily the demographic for. Uh, no, maybe you are. I don't know. Depends on the show. But, uh. No, I mean. Yeah, I'd say that we both we both liked it. It's. Uh, I think it's coming at an important time in which, uh, I think our the momentum of the the Archie reboot is slowing down a little bit. Um, I think uh, the the Archie reboot is running out of big set pieces. At least the Mark Wade, the, again, the main Archie book. Uh, the Jughead series and the Betty and Veronica series are off on their own tangents and they apparently don't really intersect all that much even though they're all supposed to take place in a new continuity filled universe in a way that the old Archie comics never did um, but uh, yeah this this refuels the you know that the sexiness that we got hints of in the new Archie comic um, and I think this will be a fun uh, interpretation of these characters. I always feel, with regards to adaptations of, of comics and, and literary stuff, is that you should always try to do the one really faithful. Yeah, you should. You need to nail the really faithful one before you get to do like a weird reinterpretation. Twist on it, yeah. yeah. So, like, well, one of my big problems with the Josh Trank Fantastic Four was that I don't think we've gotten a really good, real Fantastic Four yet. So. We did. We haven't deserved. You didn't think the uh, first movies were faithful enough, or just not executed? Not executed well the, enough. Yeah. You know, like we really, we need a really good faithful one. 
before we can do like a really weird I go though, so. No, I know. And, uh, they were, in hindsight, like, they were better. They were better than the, Fanta the, than the new Fantastic Four. Um, but, uh, you know, but I... I didn't feel like I'm, I'm down with this new reinvention of this arch. I mean, I, I think maybe... Well, I think this may be... I, I feel like it can still kind of abide by this rule that you're talking about. At least in the CW universe, this is something that would feel like very straight down the middle. You know, high school, high school sexy drama, you know, issues of younger millennials, that sort of thing. Uh, I, I feel like it, it feels like uh, faith as faithful to a modern Archie as you can be. That's, uh, that's, that's pretty, that's pretty faithful. Uh, it's never, I mean, I, I don't think you're ever going to see nowadays a, an adaptation of the really old Archies that's just going to seem very yeah, kind of no, silly and dated or, or just not, you know, not a big enough story to kind of yeah, maintain it, a whole television yeah, series. Yeah, it, it, it would, so. it would not flesh out very well in a, in a, just to have a story about a yeah, but, but I don't, a sandwich. I, I don't feel like this is stepping on the, you know, the space of the originals. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure that there are people that are maybe, I mean, I'd say you're a fan of all Archies from kind of all time periods. I'm sure there are maybe some people who are purists who might say, oh, this is not my, this is not my Archie. I mean, there are certainly parts of me that feel that way and that like they, they're, they're, you know, they, they canceled some of the art, the original Archie series and they only have the digests, for example. Um, and then as far as the normal comics go, they only have the new Riverdale ones now. Um, so part of me feels like they are de-emphasizing old Archies, mm -hmm. um, in favor of this new one. And I would hope that that won't be, I hope that they won't Keep, phase it out even more than they already have. You know, oh, okay. I think there's room yeah. for all of those, um, but I think they've done they've done a much better job of, of again uh, cultivating all all branches of this brand, mm -hmm. um, and then I really give them props for that. Uh, uh, they they really got their heads on straight on how to balance the traditional and and take it to. A new generation. No, and yeah, this is a great fit. The, the CW is the right place for this. Like, Greg Berlanti. I was a big fan of Everwood. That was a show I really liked back in the day when it was on, and this is a bit of that with a little more of a Twin Peaks uh, mystery and the, you know, that comic world, mm -hmm. glossy comic world in it. So, I don't know. I'm excited to, to watch more. I, uh, I know, Gossip Girl's been gone for a while. What, what am I gonna watch now to live uh, like a, like I'm 18 again? Yeah, I think it'll, I think it'll just scratch an itch that people have, you know, people. That we're getting old and for. we need to like, desperately cling to okay. our high school I drama. Hope, I, you know, I don't know whether or not the show will actually do well. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it isn't. You know, part of me wonders if it isn't almost like not sexy enough. It's yeah, like too a, you know, the, nice. This will still require. Uh, for, for, for what it is, it's still going to require for real young people to be into it, right? And yeah, I, I, I wonder whether or not I'm not sure. I mean, maybe you know, like, maybe can they watch won't. this and not care who these characters you know, that these characters are reinventions of other characters and think that it is objectively interesting? Well, and you know, and it has we are to... watching it because we're like, whoa, this is a twist on characters that we, you know, that would that's and, part uh, of the novel, again. Yes, and uh, you know, Gossip Girl has been on the air in a while, and this is competing with shows kind of like Pretty Little Liars. Yeah. That sort of, I'd say, I, I mean, I don't know if Riverdale... I mean, does, does CW even have more. these types of shows anymore? Like, a lot of these are, like, MTV shows and ABC Family shows. It's Freeform now. Freeform. Uh-huh, yes, yes, right. <laughs> but, I mean, like, you know, this CW... When we, was the last time you CW know, like, had I, I felt like they Phoenix doubled down show. more on uh, shows like Arrow, yeah, exactly. Beauty, and, uh, Beauty and the Beast. Uh, I don't even know if that show's still on. I don't watch my CW as yeah, so, much as I should. Uh, um, and The Flash, obviously, being the really, really big popular show that yes, I feel right like it, it's all based like it's nostalgia from from multiple generations it's nostalgia from the art the old Archie generation like, you know, it's I mean, nostalgia for the, the early Flash. the 90210 generation yeah. and it's uh, nostalgia for the like you know early 2000s WB I'm, generation I'm sure this show you know uh, well, no, well, they, I think they still have Vampire Diaries. I believe that show, I, I know, what yeah. is it, Nina Dobrev's not on the show anymore. 
or she was leaving the but show. I mean, I'm like not just, sure. Just, I don't watch it religiously. Straight, but not saying, supernatural. Those are pretty. Uh, oh, what do they have? Is it is it called the originals? That's the other. Uh, it's a lot. It's a little more paranormal. A little more sci-fi. I'd say the network is pretty female skewing. Although I'm not sure if the Flash skews as female because I, I mean it's I, pretty equal. It, I would it say. does. I'd say that shows a little more fifty-fifty. But you know, shows like Vampire Diaries obviously are a lot more female skewing, and I'm not sure where Riverdale is meant to fit in there. I think on the one hand, you know, it is it's a high school drama, so it's meant to. Uh, no, it's, it's as good, it's as good of a that place as it could ever be because it's a comic book adaptation and it's teen but romance. It is, but it is so definitely, that's as good as, like, they're as insanely attractive as all the characters are and there's some little, you know, steamy little parts in it. It is not on the level of what I've seen on Vampire Diaries, which is still, again, it's everything's pretty G-rated compared to, like, Game of Thrones or something like that where there's actual nudity and actual sex and not just you know, sexy, sexy music video, sexy, but, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's tough. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, what it has going for it is the, the history of these characters already being built in. And I think people, even if you've never read an Archie comic, you know a little bit about Archie, you know, a but little is bit that about, a, but a bit about know, the like triangle. What would, you know, a great love triangle, if you really always didn't... fun for... Exactly. Uh, although I'll, I mean, I, I stand by that usually I think the more fun love triangles are two guys, one girl, that's your, uh, uh, I think that's how Vampire Diaries works, and that's, uh, you know, Dawson yeah, and Casey right, exactly. and Joey. That, that's what I'm saying. Is that, like, <laughs> that, if, you know, who, or, or even Twilight, who will she if, pick, and this is who will Archie you, pick, and he's a good looking this guy. Show, <laughs> as somebody who has zero interest or memory of what it's but supposed to be. But I think people at least know the Archie brand right. or you know the, you know, a little bit about it going in. Yeah, but, which is that, is but, but is it going to make you tune in? I don't know. I mean, I, I think I'm, people really. I hope so. I, I mean, they are they're banking on it. Again, there's some really really attractive people on here. Whether you're a mom watching the show and you remember Dylan McKay, you've got that for you know people who are our age, older millennials and Gen Xers. There's that 90210 nostalgia factor. And again, all the if you're a woman watching this or a young a high schooler or somebody in their early 20s, the certainly not to belabor it, because I'm, I'm sure they have all many, many other talents, but uh, obviously they, they selected an extremely attractive cast, which I don't think hurts much if you're, I mean, they have if you're watching the show. That's how, you know, right, right. That's, that's a template for that, the... That's how it is. But uh, again, yes, the, I don't know. I mean, if you're, if, if you're just catching a glimpse of of this and you say, oh, am I interested in watching this? I, I think there are attractive people worth watching. The, the mystery is is fun. Uh, I, I'm not as familiar with Pretty Little Liars, but I believe there's a similarity there. There's a kind of a dead person mystery in that also. So, you know, they're, they're drawing on a lot of things that are successful. So we'll, we'll see. I don't know. I mean, it's, uh, I, I, is it, uh, is it sad to say, oh, I wouldn't be surprised either way if it was successful or not, if it's insanely successful? Of course, it's Archie. Who doesn't love Archie? If people don't connect to it, I guess you can say, oh, well, yeah, you know, it's Archie, and that's just for maybe a different generation, or it's not sexy enough for the CW, or it's not sexy enough for for uh, younger audiences, or it's not uh, provocative enough. I don't know, but uh, but it looks good, so it has that going for it, and I, and I really enjoyed it, so there we go. Yep. Hopefully, uh, hopefully the rest of the season will turn out good. Yeah.